Italy is known for many things, food, wine, and breathtaking ancient architecture. But did you know that this popular country is also well known for its cars? Italy's automobile industry is one of the best in the world and is known to be the birthplace of elegant sporty cars, like Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, and the like. Another spectacular Italian car brand is Fiat. Known for manufacturing distinctly Italian vehicles like hatchbacks and roadsters, Fiat had influence all over the world. In its glory days, the Italian car brand dominated rival car brands in different countries. However, the opposite is true for the US. In America, Fiat has gradually lost its relevance and has taken several competitors down along with it. One of the most notable victims of Fiat's downfall is Chrysler. But how did the Italian automobile company manage to annihilate one of the largest automobile manufacturers in the US? Well, you're about to find out. In this video, we'll be talking about how Fiat killed Chrysler. We at Business Chronicles tell extraordinary business stories. Please subscribe to our channel to help us make more videos. What is Fiat? Despite its misfortune in the US, Fiat is not your regular automobile brand. It is the largest automobile manufacturer in Italy, with about 1.5 million units produced every year. Fiat, short for Fabrica Italiana di Automobile Torino, was founded in 1899 by a group of entrepreneurs led by Giovanni Agnelli. The first Fiat plant was opened in 1900 and production began almost immediately. Even in that time, the creativity and professionalism of the company's engineering staff was obvious. Their designs were fancy and different from any other automobile that existed at the time. This quality allowed Fiat's annual sales to increase at an exponential rate. In 1900, when the plant was established, the company manufactured 24 cars, and this number grew to 1,149 by 1906. In 1908, Fiat climbed to new heights when the first Fiat aircraft engine was manufactured. Also that same year, the company started making sales abroad. Fiat taxis became popular across Europe and the company made its debut in the United States. By this time, the Italian automobile company was the largest in the country and the third largest in the world after General Motors and Ford. The company's expansion exposed them to new horizons and possibilities, and the management seized every opportunity. Fiat started exporting vehicles to clients in the US in 1908, and in 1910, the company decided to open up a manufacturing plant in the country. The plant, built in Poughkeepsie, New York, was overseen by the newly found American Fiat Automobile Company. In America, the company upheld its reputation for constructing elegant and fancy cars. In fact, owning a Fiat vehicle was the ultimate sign of wealth and class. In 1918, the cost of a Fiat was as high as $6,400, when its competitors cost about $600. Despite its high price, Fiat had a large clientele and the company's sales exponentially increased. However, when World War I began, the manufacturing plant in the US was shut down, and its other plants across Europe focused on the production of ambulances, aircraft engines, machine guns, and trucks. Anyway, production of Fiat in the US ceased for almost four decades, and in that time the company's sales in the US declined very drastically. However, Fiat continued to take over the automotive industry in Italy and across Europe. Later in the 1950s, Fiat made a comeback to the US and they had a successful run. However, their sales began to plummet a few decades after, causing them to pull out of the country a second time. In 1983, Fiat closed down all its manufacturing plants in the US due to poor sales and the existence of newer and flashier vehicles from other companies. Furthermore, the Italian company had a reputation for being unreliable, and the summative effect of all these factors pushed Fiat out of the US automobile market. The company continued to flourish across the world, especially in Italy, but this didn't stop Fiat from trying to re-enter the US market. After years of looking for an opening, the perfect opportunity presented itself in 2014. Chrysler is a popular automotive brand indigenous to the US and known for its stylish design and brilliant engineering. The company was created in 1925 and had a good run for almost eight decades. However, Chrysler faced several challenges that drove the company into the ground. 
But the straw that broke the camel's back was the Great Recession that happened between 2007 and 2014. This economic crisis pushed Chrysler to the brink and the company filed for bankruptcy in 2009. Most of the company's shares were sold in 2011 and Fiat stepped in to buy the majority of it from the US Treasury. This purchase made Chrysler a property of Fiat and so its style was influenced by the Italian automobile company. Remember that Fiat was known in America for manufacturing luxurious cars. So after the merger, Chrysler was made into one of its luxury divisions. The luxurious Chrysler 300 was a testament to this dramatic change. In 2014, Fiat bought Chrysler's remaining shares. So both companies merged and the resulting company was registered under a new holding company, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. As America came out of the recession, fuel prices stayed high and Americans opted for smaller vehicles that were also fuel efficient. This was the perfect opportunity for Fiat to reintroduce their compact hatchbacks and roadsters. This time, however, the vehicles were reintroduced with a splash of Chrysler style. The return of Fiat to America was great in the beginning, but the momentum didn't last very long. Fiat sales began to plummet yet again and this problem was mostly due to external problems. In the years after the recession, Americans started purchasing less cars and more SUVs, pickup trucks and other crossover vehicles. This switch in preference was bad for Fiat since their production consisted mainly of small cars. The company tried to bounce back with compact SUVs like the Fiat 500L, but minimal SUVs like those grew out of fashion really fast. Now in recent times, car demand in America has dropped to about 30% of all vehicle demands, and Fiat sales have dropped by less than half between 2014 and now. In the last three years, Fiat has barely sold a total of 2,000 cars, marking an all-time low record for the company. The Fiat-Chrysler merger wasn't quite the miracle both companies had hoped for. In 2020, the future of the company seemed very bleak and in anticipation for the company's downfall. Fiat-Chrysler Automobiles hoped to merge with another automobile company to stay afloat. In January 2021, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles merged with the PSA Group to form a new company called Stellantis. Stellantis consists of 14 car brands including Fiat, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram and Dodge, making it the world's fourth largest automaker by sales. This merger hasn't done much for Fiat as their sales are still down. Total Fiat sales in 2023 were only about 600. However, the success of other brands within Stellantis like Jeep and Ram has taken the focus from the failure of the once thriving Italian automobile company. As it stands, it'll take more than a miracle to restore Fiat and Chrysler to their former glory. And that's a wrap on this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.